Google Cloud's AI announcements. And no, it's Google Cloud, not Google, because we did see some announcements uh, on the prior week about Gemini and, and stuff like that. But what did Thomas Kurian have to say that was incremental here? Well, it's really about the integrations. Um, you know, what we heard about a week ago was Gemini. What we heard about this week is how it's going to be used in Vertex, uh, Pat. It's, you know, how it's going to be part of uh, Google AI Studio, which is basically the enabler for people to be building on Google Cloud using Gemini. You know, we're hearing about this, you know, you kind of just go through the last year, you know, you've heard about Azure Cloud Services with OpenAI. You've heard about, um, you know, everything that AWS is doing with, with their offerings and very much an open approach. Well, Google is very centric to its, its models. Google's approach was always about building a full stack capability. And this week, um, you know, he was basically focused on, you know, the integrations uh, and being seen as clearly caught up in the market to uh, open AI. By the way, are you flashing those up there? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, we've got some people uh, coming in from Twitter. We've got some people coming in from LinkedIn. Just just to say hi. That's all. Hello. Good. Thanks for joining. Hi. You haven't done that in the past. Our producers are getting cooler and cooler as it goes on. Dan, but, uh, adding capabilities to the 6.5, and who knows? We might go live at CES 2024. Oh, we are. Okay. So let's kind of run this back. You got AI hypercomputer, which is going to be, you know, a train and serve generative, uh, generative AI models. You've got uh, generative AI support in Vertex with uh, Gemini now. Uh, you do have, what I did like, by the way, is because, you know, I did talk about how they kind of are building this conducive all Google, but you did hear them talk about um, also being open. And this is something I think is very important. They mentioned uh, Anthropic, they mentioned Cohere. Um, the company did do a good job. I thought yesterday, uh, when Thomas, is it yesterday? It was two days ago. Thomas did mention customers, which to me is always very important that are going to be building and uh, engaging and uh, utilizing the overall G Google Cloud stack. Pat, I did say something earlier, it was interesting. I heard the same stat from two company about unicorns. Um, Google, 80% of unicorns are building in Google Cloud. Um, ironically, 80% of unicorns are also building in the US. <laughs> By the way, if there's ever been a, a proof point for, for multi-cloud, do you not feel like that was the ultimate proof point? Is The answer is probably yes. You have 80% of unicorns are using multi-cloud. Um, so what else? You have uh, Duet, Pat. So Duet, you know, the all, um, you know, the assistant AI agents were announced. So you, know, you go up and down the stack, um, you know, it really felt to me like an extension, not anything so much new. Uh, and, and I'd love to get your take on this, Pat, but everything we heard from Thomas was my expectation. Meaning yeah. the first week was about Google holistically coming to market and saying, here's what we're building as an LLM. Here's our strategy. Here's our silicon. Uh, you and I put some thoughts on, you wrote a great tweet on the TPU5 uh, doing comparatives. Um, but like, overall, what I expect now it has to make its way over into the sandbox. And Google Cloud is the sandbox. So if you're a company and you want to build App applications and develop capabilities using generative AI, they have to make these models available and accessible and easy to use. So that's really what Thomas was focused on, in, in my opinion, Pat. Um, so it was more of an extension to me of the news than it was necessarily anything new. I don't know. What, what did you think? Did you think it was, I guess, let me ask you that. Did you, was there anything surprising to you? Because to me, this all felt very expected, but I was happy to see how quickly they moved to make these things available in Google Cloud. Yeah, so most of this uh, was to be expected. I, I did appreciate Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian kind of doing a, uh, a live Q&A uh, with the analysts. Uh, I showed up late, but I was appreciative of, of the time he spent. And I thought I was time well spent because quite frankly, the I'll call it the consumer version of Gemini uh, that came out uh, didn't land very well, okay? There were some really good things about it. I mean, quite frankly, you know, they're talking about a, a future service that's 25 better, 25 percent better than what's already in market uh, with uh, GPT-4. Um, and you know, there were some questions about the uh, the demos and, and the the duck, <laughs> the blue duck. I mean, I I think that's what it was. Um, and, and so didn't land very well. And it also didn't seem like uh, there was a lot of uh, prep time for press and analysts running up. So, yeah. 
Can I, can I just, because we talked about this last week. I think it's actually important. What is the, what is the openness in the world to companies showing capabilities versus what's expected? Like, is there any longer an acceptance path for companies to sort of do those, you know, we're in this world now where everybody's pulling apart the threads on everything. And companies used to, I remember 20 years ago in the tech industry, the, there was someone behind the curtain that showed, <laughs> showing the demo of what was coming. And now it's like, it, it, is there latitude for that? You know? So Dan, I, yeah. So Dan, I think it's context and history, right? Yeah. If you remember what happened in the, the, the first Google Bard, it was uh, introduction. Oh, yeah. it, it was so bad that they pulled the video down on YouTube. Okay, because I, I was trying to look for it because it was done out of France and it was on a different time zone and I couldn't I couldn't find it. They pulled it down. It was so bad. So then I think people were were on 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 high alert. I mean, Google. Uh, sorry, Apple, for example, uh, has a de <laughs> decent track record uh, showing demos of what's going to be. And then the experience ends up being that a uh, little bit of scrutiny, but 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 not a lot. So uh, context and history came in. So I think everybody was on alert uh, for this, and, and I think it's super important uh, always to show this. People are these big huge companies are getting away from disclaimers at the bottom of let's say a video, uh, and even a claim, and even you know Apple. Uh, is is very poor at this uh, when it makes performance claims. Uh, it doesn't actually disclaim in the video. It disclaims maybe on their website afterwards at, at the very bottom. So, I, I do think uh, um, that that we haven't shifted as an industry yet to some we don't believe anything and we can't show vision. I really think it's it's context and history, but. Uh, getting back to that, I, I was just really thinking, I didn't mean to derail you. I just really wanted to, I yeah, man, it's we kind of know, we the air where we're going to scrutinize every demo we see now, or do you think this will like to your point about context is it because they botched that first one that now every demo they do is going to get a level of scrutiny because we haven't like Apple, like you said, they get away with everything. Nobody asks anything. You and I are the only two good people on the planet that ask questions of what Apple shows. Yeah. And you know, I'm pretty sure that that was done by Google DeepMind, which is research, which, right, you you would expect kind of this this long pull. So so by the way, uh, by the way, Dan, I do like going going down these ancillary topics. I related topics say I don't think we should be completely programmed to, to where we can't talk about something that we think our our viewers are interested in. So <laughs> this this was the. Oh, by the way, all that stuff that you saw with Gemini and TPU five, it is avail. It is going to be available to enterprises too. And like you said, with Vertex, uh, with uh, Duet, um, I think the the important uh, point that was that uh, Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian came out uh, and and made that message because you know think about if you're an enterprise user and you're seeing the blue duck, you're seeing all this stuff. I mean, I think the first uh, article showed up on uh, uh, Engadget, right? Like, wait a second, is this is this enterprise grade uh, technology or, or or not? And how should I relate to it? There was something very provocative that I just want to let you know. I need to do more research on, but it was uh, running data and AI anywhere with essentially Google's distributed cloud. Okay, and Google, Google's distributed cloud, uh, cloud is essentially a hybrid offering that runs on-prem uh, at a data center. Uh, it runs uh, at, a, at a colo. Um, and, um, you know, again, I'm looking for the company that can give me a reasonable uh, layer cake diagram of exactly how the pieces fit together, how on-prem, how edge, and how um, uh, public cloud all fit uh, together. So uh, I need to do the double click, but essentially what I'm reading is, is that, you know, they're putting a uh, Xeon. And by the way, um, Google Cloud was the original uh, hybrid offering that the name escapes me. They, they, they got away. Anthos? Sorry. Anthos. Exactly. Saying. Thank you very much. But, but uh, uh, you know, they're, they're putting, you know, Xeon, Xeon's out there. I don't think they're putting TPU out there, but I need to do the double click on there. This reminds me a little bit 
of Oracle Cloud at customer, right? You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different types of uh, uh, implementations. And by the way, six of them are new. Modular data center, scalable multi-rack, tactical appliance, HA multi-server, high available HA. So anyways, I needed to double click on that. I didn't feel like there was a lot of time uh, spent on that and I didn't get pre-briefed. So uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Matt and the team to dive in and see what's going on there.